before we get into doing some work in regression in Python, I wanted to uh, remind you a little bit about the data set that we're actually going to be working with. I introduced this data set on, on day one of the semester, uh, but the, the larger context is that, that we're uh, working with uh, monkeys. We are doing multi-unit recording in an area of the brain called the primary motor cortex. Uh, and, our, and, and at the same time, we get to observe how the monkey's arm is moving. And, and our objective at, as a first step, and, and, and this is what we'll be doing in our, uh, in, in our examples, is that what we'd like to be able to do is look at the cell activity that is uh, happening right now and make predictions about how the arm is moving. In, in the larger context, those predictions, the idea is to use those predictions as a means of actually controlling a prosthesis. Um, we're not worried about that in this particular uh, example, but that's the, the context for this. The, uh, the problem setup looks like this. So at some point time T, uh, we want to make a prediction about arm motion. So this blue line here corresponds to say the orientation of the, uh, the shoulder joint. Red is uh, velocity, black is acceleration, and uh, green is the torque that's being generated in order to move that, that joint. Um, remember that the monkey is working entirely in a, in a planar system, so, so her shoulder joint, even though technically it's a three degree of freedom joint, we're reducing this problem down to a single degree of freedom. And what we're going to do is, so, so we're trying to make predictions at time t about how the arm is moving. What we're going to do is chop up time in the recent history. And for each of the neurons, and those are our horizontal lines here, uh, we're going to count the number of action potentials uh, that we see for each individual neuron. Uh, so, so there are, something on the order of about 50 of these uh, neurons, so 50 rows here, and a history of about, uh, of exactly 20 uh, time periods. Each time period is 50 milliseconds long, so uh, 20 time periods is one second. Uh, and, and so the total number of counts we have is something on the order of about 1,000 uh, counts. So this is going to be our input vector. And the thing that we're trying to predict, in, in our example that we're going to do, we're either going to be trying to predict uh, position, the, this blue line, uh, or velocity, the, the red line here. In, in the data that we already have available on the server, um, those are already cut into uh, 20 independent folds. Uh, the time uh, is uh, continuous. Uh, but we do have some gaps uh, in, in time. So there are periods where the, the monkey is, uh, is pausing and, and not uh, participating in the experiment. So we've cut those out, uh, but everything is, is time stamped. Uh, so we, when we actually go to generate uh, temporal plots of position and velocity, there, are, there will be some gaps there that, that we'll just uh, have to deal with. Um, each row in the CSV file for the neural data uh, contains uh, the 20 spike counts for each neuron. So, so we have uh, essentially a thousand columns. I think, I think uh, we actually have a 960 columns in our uh, neural spike count uh, data set. Uh, and then each row is a different uh, time period. Uh, even though the, the real data does have some gaps, uh, we're very careful in our pr data pre-processing to make sure that each of these samples uh, represents a contiguous period of time. So that, that one second of history uh, that we're using as an input vector, that corresponds to a real one second without any pauses. So that's the quick introduction. Uh, if you uh, if, if you don't remember any other details uh, about the, uh, the the configuration or the experiment, I encourage you to go back to the video on the first day. I, I spend uh, a reasonable amount of time describing what's going on there. 
So next up, uh, let's write some code.